All right, guys, I wanted to make this nice video of brief feeds while dieting. Everything you want to know about them, because this is a very uh, kind of controversial topic, uh, but it more or less pertains to whether or not you'll get any use out of them. But anyways, what is a refeed? Well, first of all, a refeed is during a period of dieting in a caloric uh, deficit, you are you deleted your glycogen storages and you basically want to refill them or you might want to replenish some metabolism adaptations. But anyways, regardless, a refeed is you basically take a day or a period of time where you eat closer to maintenance. I mean, well, it also depends on you, but you're increasing your carb intake because that has the most, um, that has the best effect on you when you're dieting. It will increase your leptin levels and um, regulate that stuff a lot better. But anyways, uh, that's basically what a refeed is. You basically just increase your carb intake. So you want, you're probably thinking like, okay, well, if I'm dieting, why would I want to increase my carbon? Why would I want to increase calories if I'm trying to lose weight? Well, first of all, you go with science. There's not a lot of science to help like, like back it up, but you do get a, a, a better metabolism uh, boost, which in turn that you'll be able to lose fat at a little bit faster rate. Well, the science isn't super clear on it, um, anecdotally for me, and what I know is especially for women, is that when I put them through a phase of free feeds, they will go back to dieting in a caloric deficit and then they'll drop weight like that. And same thing with my case. The, I think it just depends on your genetics and how well you adapt to your diet. And another reason being is that even if you are dieting and free feeds don't help that much, again, it just depends on who you are and what your dieting situation is like. Um, sometimes people will refeed and it has little to no benefit to them whatsoever. They'll find that it's just a pointless day for them. But another well-being reason is that why you want to do one is because one, it will really just help you psychologically. Because if you're sitting there in a court deficit and all you can do is think about like, oh man, I just want to try out, I just want to eat a little bit of ice cream. Oh man, I just want to do this. And then if you're giving an opportunity to be eating 500 or 700 more calories than you are when you're dieting, then you can obviously fit in some things like uh, more high carbohydrate intake and enjoy things like your low fat ice cream. And again, you want to keep the majority of your calories consumption from carbs and not fats because fats don't have that big of a impact on your leptin levels. But that's the main reason why you probably want to do it is for psychological and to avoid some of those adaptations you might have occurred. But um, how much do you want to increase your carb intake? Well, uh, I, I hear it's, it all depends, but I say a good general rule of thumb is probably about 100 to 150 grams just for like, just like a day. And how often you want to do them? Um, you probably want to, uh, depending on how lean you are, um, make a range from about one to two times a week. So, I guess this will just kind of push into the how you repeat is again to add other kinds of general carbohydrates. This could be more. This could be more depending on your situation. Um, I just find that like okay, 100, 100 grams of carbohydrates. That's four. That's four hundred calories because every gram of carbs is four calories. And that's all that really matters. So it also depends, and you want to eat closer to maintenance because being in a caloric surplus. Sometimes you you can be in a caloric surplus because that also gives you some training benefits, and um, it'll help recall glycogen storages. And then that's another reason why you probably want to do it is because for one you would want to probably structure around a training day. So let's say like you have to do legs or something, and this would be like you said you put off on like a leg day. Or if you're someone like me who does intermittent fasting where they fast, they do fast workouts. I like to put my refeeds the night before, the night before I train, because that way I can implement those carbs from last night into my training session up that morning. So that's how you do it if you're an internet faster. Um, so basically you structure around like a, I'd, I'd recommend a heavy training day. It doesn't really have to be a specific day. Uh, a good rule of thumb is just like, you know, just have something once a week. Um, that'll give you the most benefits and repeats like again like they're not something magical sometimes well, I guess it just depends but for one if you're a woman women 
they're, it's funny, women have the hardest time, it is a proof of fact, women have a way harder time losing weight than men. Men can drop it like that. For women, it's like, their body is always constantly trying to fight off them trying to lose weight, because women, their body, their body type, their, like, their, it's just like their whole life is structured around just, like, survival for, like, you know, caring of children and crap, you know all that fun yeah so it's like they want to hold on to as much fat as they possibly can and so when they sit there and try to diet their their metabolism adapts way faster than man does so and another issue is that women <laughs> they they also really like when they when they go into dieting phase i think there's just more of a stigma i guess a lot of people kind of do this too but i say more so women is that they will like they basically they will start off a crash diet and that's where it's like, okay, well, if I have you refeed, and it's like, oh, I can't lose weight. They'll, like, lose weight for, like, a week, and then they kind of just stay there. They get, like, stuck. Well, one thing is that, for women specifically, is just that when you're crash dieting, your metabolism adapts a lot quicker, and your body will um, stop being active and subconsciously, because it's based off your meat. Uh, I could be wrong, it's... Non exercise activity thermogenesis. And so it basically it's just like you fidgeting or you talking, breathing, um, just like something that's not like pretending like you like doing like actual physical activity for like skeletal muscle or cardiovascular system purposes. But um that will go down because if you are in a core deficit, your body's trying to save off of trying to kill itself. <laughs> um so you would want to structure it like this, you have your Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So let's say, let's grab a different marker, so that way you understand how to train a repeat. Okay, you probably want to sit up on. So let's say you have like a leg section here, you probably want to have a repeat on this day. And then deficit, 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 deficit. And deficit, um, that's, that would be like if you're 12% for men. I don't know for women, but I say for like a good general thumb, I'd say like for every percentage of body fat for men, I'd probably at least uh, 1.5 times multiplier for women, or like six to six to five percent more body fat for women. So if you can these numbers, I like that much more to it. Anyways, for like 12% for men. Because if you're at a higher body percentage, repeats are actually really useless because your body already has enough um, energy stored up in the form of fatty adipose tissue. So um, you won't really need repeats unless you're under 12% body fat. But then when you are under, you know, then again, let's get another presentation. Right? If you're lower than 10, uh, 12%, let's say in the range of 10% body fat. Let's say you're gonna want at least two repeats. So you might have one on Monday, and then let's say your next training session would be Friday, and so you could just have it on you know, Friday. So I'd be like, okay, do that, and then you'll notice because when you're at a low body percentage, you can you can only mobilize so many fatty acids, and your body is now at a point where it's like, all right, I don't want to lose weight as quickly, and it's gonna resort to burning other things, aka okay, like your uh, muscle fibers or tissue. To be broken down as energy instead of wanting to prioritize a lot of fat. It just sits there and just try to break down everything for energy just to keep you alive. Just because you just want you just want to get shredded for somewhere, right? You just want that you just want the six pack. Anyways, that's how I'd probably structure it. Um, and also, if you're even leaner than this, like I would say like seven, seven, eight percent body fat, which by the way, if you are trying to maintain that level, good luck. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna like harp on you, but the thing is that, you know, you're going to suffer a lot of hormonal issues if you go below 10% body fat, so I would really recommend that. So, uh, just keep it on the ranges of this, and if you're under 10%, honestly, you can probably throw in a third refeed day if you're under, like, let's say 8%, you can throw in a third one, or if anything, what I probably recommend doing is just probably keep it too, but increase your calorie intake on days that you're trying to do a deficit. So that's what briefing is, that's how you set one up and why you'd want to do it. Enjoy that.